Room Full of Bugs Productions presents... Ugh, I hate bugs. I thought it was about time to dabble in more of the high voltage stuff. Anyway, I thought I'd revisit trying to make a Tesla coil. Now all this stuff here, you can see we've got some electronic stuff over here, and some more electronic stuff over here. This is obviously not part of it. It's the usual Coca-Cola can that makes its appearance in every one of my videos. Anyway, all of that stuff powers this little coil, which is just a few turns of wire, and we get, when that coil is pulsed at a high frequency, over a thousand volts out of this coil. I think I'm getting about two thousand volts or so out of this. Now I'm going to zoom in, and I'll turn on. Look at that. I'm getting a little arc off that. Oh, and look at that. Got a little bit of a streamer too. Sorry about the super blur -o vision there. I didn't realize the camera's blurring so much. Blurring camera's gonna blur. Let's just try that again, because you didn't really see it. And also, we can see how much current this thing is pulling. So I'll turn it on. Oh, look at that. 5.8 amps. And a spark. Well, hope the camera got it this time. So, what does an ordinary light bulb do when I connect it up to this? Well, this. You can see a little streamer in the light bulb. I know what you're thinking. Is this some kind of trick bulb or something? Well, it's not. It's just an ordinary 40 watt light bulb. You can also do a wireless energy transmission with this. So I bring this CFL, end of this CFL near the tube. As you can see it lights up. As I pull it away. Um, it's still lighting. There's still a little bit of light and it's miles away from the tube now. So I bring... As you can see, as I bring it closer, it lights nice and bright. It's not even touching it. There's only one word to explain this, and that is magic. Now, let's take a bit more of a closer look at this circuit, because I just went speeding through it, and you didn't really get to see exactly how it works. So let's have a look at what we've actually got. In the blue corner, or rather just at the end here is a simple square wave oscillator which is based on a 555 timer and that is connected to these MOSFETs here you can see two of them because this isn't a half bridge configuration or anything like that anything like that this is just two connected in parallel so they both share the load and these MOSFETs act like a switch so whenever this thing pulses the MOSFETs, they turn on, and when that pulse is gone, they turn off. Next along, we have the coils, which I'll talk about in a little while. And over here is the power supply for the coil. It's just an ordinary transformer, bridge rectifier, and a couple of smoothing capacitors. And how this works is that the positive from the power supply, just this wire here, it goes into this coil, and then it goes from this coil into the drain of the MOSFETs, and the source of the MOSFETs goes into the negative, or ground, or whatever you want to call it. Also, the other the other end of this coil is connected to the ground and the more observant of you might notice that there is a capacitor here that is connected across this coil just to increase the resonance well here you see well here you see circuit um well here's the circuit of the thing 
So we've got 5.55 timer here. And I know I made a little bit of a mistake here. And even trying, after trying to correct that mistake, I still made a mistake. So I had to group pins 2 and 6 on the same thing. But that's how they'd be connected anyway. They're, most 555 circuits, the pins 2 and 6 are connected together. So it doesn't really matter. Anyway, there's that variable capacitor. I've got absolutely no idea what the value of it is. Anyway, the 555 is, as you can probably see, it's in a stable mode. And the duty cycle is set to about 50% or as close to 50% as you can get with it in that particular configuration. Then there's a 470 ohm resistor connecting this little push-pull output stage just to buffer the 555's output. Then we've got the two MOSFETs there connected in parallel and as you can see the base, no not the base, sorry, the, the gate of each of these MOSFETs is connected by its own 22 ohm resistor and there's the primary of the tester coil. There's the capacitor that was across it. And um, there's the secondary. I know that should be drawn there because it make more sense to draw it there. But, you know, you get the gist of it. That's the um, circuit. Now, I know a lot of you are saying, oh, you, that, you know, I'm never going to be able to do this with a 555. And you're right, because a, 550, a 555... We'll only go up to about 500 kilohertz before it doesn't really work properly anymore. So what I intend to do is make my own oscillator. Yeah. My own oscillator that can go up to about 2 megahertz or so with a nice low impedance output. Don't know how that's all going to come together, but we shall see. So one idea I had here can you hear that bird out there? Anyway, I'll have to shout over it. So one idea I've had is I thought I'd reverse engineer a radio to get the high frequency oscillator that I need. Now I've dissected a clock radio and I've managed to find the oscillator for the radio in it. Which I think is right there. No, actually, sorry, wrong pin. As you can see, I found the oscillator right there. And as I tune it, see the gap. But unfortunately, this thing has got some kind of weird grounding on it that I have just simply cannot work out. So that's going to have to be a... Um, I'm going to have to think of another solution for that. So this is what I've come up with. I've made a little oscillator circuit. It's an op amp based circuit. Now I tried loads of L I tried loads of LC based oscillators, but I couldn't get any one of them to oscillate. Yet I tried this little circuit, I just built it and tested it. And it worked absolutely perfectly first time. Didn't have to reconnect anything or move any wires around or you know correct any little mistakes I may have made. Now this should be able to oscillate way up into the megahertz region. Unfortunately, when I turn the frequency up, if I can just get the um, knife in there, as you can see, as I go higher and higher, It sort of turns into a sort of triangle light waveform and we lose a lot of amplitude. So this chip is obviously just not able to handle those high frequencies that good. So I'm going to have to find a better chip for that. And for those of you interested in the circuit, well, here it is. I know I've written oot instead of out, but for some reason English people say oo instead of ow. I don't know why. Well, I say ow, but I'm weird. Anyway. Yeah, I know I haven't drawn it out very good. It's just a rough sketch, really, but everything's there. Anyway, there is one little experiment I want to do with this. Let's see if this will work like a radio transmitter. Now, I've got this boombox here, which you may remember from some of my previous videos. Should be able to transmit within the AM band, so I'm going to put this onto radio.
Okay, that was loud. And I'm going to turn the thing on and adjust the frequency. Let's see if we get radio silence anywhere. Oh, there's something going on there. Okay, that b appears to be transmitting. Um, it's transmitting on a frequency that this radio can pick up. Don't know if that might be a harmonic frequency or the actual frequency it's tuned to. I'm just going to do this. Oh, there we go. Obviously, I'm not trying to transmit any kind of sound, but as you can see, it is in up, way up into the radio frequencies. Now all I need to find is a uh, better chip for the that can actually handle those frequencies much better. And this is for the rest of you nerds out there interested in what kind of chip I used. Right, anyway, the strange thing is, here, it says that has a 27 megahertz bandwidth. If we go down to the graphs and that... On this graph here, you can see the output falls about, I don't know, 110, 120 kilohertz. So it's pretty much contradicting itself there. So anyway, until I find a better chip to use, I guess that'll be it for now. So until next time, goodbye.